Keeping an eye on the government is critical to keeping the government in its place. But while government loves keeping an eye on us, it hates it when we keep an eye on it. And it's been easier to do so. It makes it more dangerous. More and more citizens are recording their interactions with the police using simple and perfectly legal devices like their cell phones. And the cops don't like that one bit, increasingly resisting the tapings with force and even jail time. Take a look at this. Get off the motorcycle. Get off the motorcycle. Get off the motorcycle. State police. That's a video a Maryland motorcyclist recorded when he was pulled over for speeding by a cop, not wearing a uniform, not showing a badge, but with a gun drawn. The motorcyclist got a ticket and was so upset about the incident, he posted the video online. You won't believe what happened next. Days later, his home was raided by Maryland State Police, who confiscated his computer and arrested him. He's been charged with two felonies for allegedly violating Maryland's wiretapping law. He faces 16 years in jail. This is in the United States, not in North Korea. Reason Magazine's Radley Balco has been reporting on this story and this disturbing trend. He joins me now. Radley, welcome back to Freedom Watch. We always have you on when the police are doing the most god-awful things. What, what is happening here in the United States? Are the police actually claiming that when they stop someone for what they say is a crime or a traffic infraction in public, that they, the police, have some right to privacy at that moment, at that place, at the side of the road, and that they can't be filmed when doing it? Well, that, I mean, that was the argument in this case, Judge. Uh, but actually, the, uh, a, a Maryland judge has uh, since thrown the charges against uh, Anthony Graber out. But here's something to consider. Uh, the prosecutor in that case was wrong on the law. Uh, the, the state police were wrong on the law when they raided this guy, wrongly arrested him, wrongly jailed him. This guy had two felony charges hanging over his head for months. Right. Now, a Maryland state judge ruled that they were wrong on the law and he was right. Now, think about this. If he had been wrong on the law, he could have gone to jail for 15 years or more, right? Right. He was right. They were wrong. What's going to happen to them? Absolutely nothing. He can't sue them. Uh, it's almost impossible to sue a prosecutor. It's very difficult to sue the police. Right, right. Uh, and they're not going to be disciplined or sanctioned in any way. Uh, there is a huge, I mean, the, this arresting people for videotaping the cops, I mean, that's a bad enough issue in itself. There's also this double standard about citizens are supposed to know the law front to back. Exactly. Uh, but the people actually charged with enforcing it aren't expected to know the law. And I think that's a Here, huge problem. Here's another good example. Here's another example of taping cops. Here's a bicyclist shoved off his bike by a cop. The officer not knowing that he was being filmed. The, he intentionally knocked the bicyclist off. After the video went viral, watch this, we're doing it in slow motion. The officer was charged with filing a false criminal complaint. Ooh, a cop pushing a guy innocently and lawfully on his bike. Now, that guy was prosecuted, that cop, because he lied under oath and filed a false incident report, and he was convicted, Radley. So there, there's a, a just outcome. Uh, well, it is. Uh, as I understand it, he was actually uh, acquitted on the, the charge of assaulting the, the bicyclist. But, um, Convicted you know, on the I mean, charge this, of this, lying. Uh, of lying, right, filing, right. filing the false report. That's right. But, I mean, th that, that case illustrates why this is important, uh, Judge. I mean, I can rattle off a dozen cases where citizen shot video has actually shown uh, police officers, officers to have lied on, uh, on police reports. Here, here's one and more. I want, I want you to watch this one with us. In this incident, a Washington, D.C. cop got angry that his car was hit by a snowball by some residents having a friendly snowball fight. He gets out and he draws a gun. Watch it, and we're going to show the part with the gun in slow motion. That's the cop doing the pushing. What? He's got a gun? All right, when confronted about this incident, the officer denied that he drew his gun, and his bosses in the police department backed him up until the video went online and went viral. So how do these cops get away with this? Why do the police departments back them up when there's evidence out there that they didn't tell the truth? In this case, committed a crime.
by threatening to use deadly force over a snowball fight. Well, I mean, I mean, this is it's really incredible. In that case, you know, the, uh, the spokesman for the D.C. Police Department actually went to the media and flat out denied that this officer had pulled a gun. He said it, that that the people there must have mistaken his uh, radio for uh, for a gun. And it wasn't until the uh, the videos hit the web uh, that that story was was proven false. Uh, you know, in a lot of these cases, also, Judge, you know, the, the police will confiscate the uh, the cameras and they'll actually delete the, the photos and videos that were taken of, uh, of the incident. Uh, and, you know, I, I actually have some uh, some friends uh, who last year, I, th I think actually they've been on your show, right. uh, who were arrested in Mississippi last year and took video of that incident. When they got the video camera back, the video had been deleted. They actually took the video to a, a, a tech guy uh, who was able to uh, to retrieve the video. So we now know that somebody in that, uh, the Jones County, Mississippi Sheriff's Department, Very. deleted evidence in a criminal case. Now, that, that person needs to be prosecuted. You know I mean, the judge and called? the DA that, there need to be investigated. That's that. called obstruction of justice. People can go to jail for that for 20 years, whether they're cops or civilians. Radley Balco, thank you for joining us. Boy, it is just amazing that in a free society, you can't record public servants going about their so called public service. They work for us. And we deserve to know what they're doing. To that end, police in particular, you know this, we just saw it, have been known to trample the constitutional rights of people all the time. What you have a right to know is that you absolutely can video and audio tape them. The police routinely violate the Constitution when they pull over your car or stop you on the street. They ask you intrusive questions that you don't have to answer. They sometimes even rough people up. They push them off their bicycles. They threaten them with guns. They basically treat you like you're guilty of a crime before you've even been charged or convicted of one. The Constitution protects you from this type of police behavior. And many Americans have realized that policemen, often not caring about the Constitution, need to be photographed. So courageous Americans have decided to video and audio tape their interactions with law enforcement as a way to protect themselves from police mistreatment or to prove what happened. Yet big government is so afraid of people recording the police, it tries to ban the practice. This is completely unconstitutional. The First Amendment guarantees our right to free speech. That includes the right to listen to and record what happens in public. Cameras and recording devices are simply modern-day note-taking. And if people are using them to keep the police honest, to tell the truth about law enforcement abusing rights, that it is the right of the people to record these affronts to the Constitution. For the government to record us is Orwell's 1984 come true. For us to record the government is a public right and a smart thing to do.